It's a dangerous and deadly stretch of Colorado Road, and a new report explains why so many people crash on Highway 287 between Fort Collins and Wyoming. Nine News reporter Jennifer Meckles can walk us through this report and the recommendation to make that road safer. This corridor is an area that we knew has had issues for a long time. It is no secret this stretch of US 287 northwest of Fort Collins to the Wyoming border is a dangerous 30 miles. Compared to other rural roads that are what that are in that kind of a vicinity, yes, that it, this had a higher crash history than those were, and so we really wanted to look and see why. CDOT published a study this week that counts hundreds of crashes since 2017. 18 people have died, including three swimmers from the University of Wyoming, killed in a car crash just last month. It's not just numbers on that page. Those three lives that, that were lost the other day are, are real people who, whose lives were impacted here. We need to be able to try to make the road as safe as possible, but we also need to know what we can do. This study makes some recommendations like wildlife fencing after finding wild animals cause at least three times more crashes than any other factor or new turn lanes at problem intersections like Red Mountain Road where the Wyoming students died in February. An accident like that, a crash like that really shows you that this is something that needs to happen and needs to happen now. Just 30 miles of road one that's earned its bad reputation. If, if there's an overall theme of the of the study, it's really that we need to get going on these and here's the priority in terms of what needs to happen first. We have covered crashes on this road long before CDOT's latest study. There was one back 20 years ago. Eight students from the University of Wyoming died in that crash. Decades later, CDOT has now identified this as one of its top priority spots to work on. They have to find some ways to pay for the upgrades. They have about $8 million marked for this already, and they said this study should allow them to then go out and be able to search for now additional funding. Kyle. And Jenny, you hope also that these public conversations that we're having about this road uh, raise some awareness among people who maybe don't drive it all the time that like, hey, this is a dangerous stretch of road. You know, people need to be as careful as they can be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and public feedback, part of all this too, right? What, what do people want to see change? Mm -hmm. So, Jenny Meckles, thank you. Now to a live look outside. This camera is near Loveland Pass where you can see some pretty wet roads out there. Uh, snowy shoulders as well. Mountain snow will continue with accumulations relatively light into the night as the snow winds down. The snow winds down. We'll check in with meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen just a few minutes for you. An internal investigation at CBI says a DNA analyst manipulated a whole bunch of data, impacting more than 650 cases. This review found that Missy Woods omitted facts, tampered with evidence. There's nine news crime and justice reporter Kelly Rinky. Missy Woods was considered the gold standard in her industry. CBI says the findings in this report are now putting her work over nearly 30 years into question. The internal affairs investigation did not find Woods falsified DNA matches. Instead, CBI says Woods cut corners, manipulated data and posted incomplete results. This discovery is casting doubt on all of her work since 1994. District attorneys say they don't know how many cases could be reopened, but it's clear this is creating a lot of work for attorneys who now have to review evidence and may even need to reopen cases. It requires us now to not only review those cases and determine whether or not they need to be relitigated in any way, it means calling victims and victims' families and explaining to them the case that was resolved years ago now may not be resolved anymore. Colorado's Public Defender's Office says they want to find out if any person has been wrongfully convicted due to misconduct. Woods' attorney says his client maintains she has never given false testimony that has resulted in a false conviction. A separate criminal investigation into her work is still ongoing. Kelly Rinke, 9 News. The trial of a dentist accused of poisoning his wife is getting pushed off to August. The defense says a toxicologist scheduled to give testimony had a stroke. James Craig's trial was originally set for next month. Prosecutors say that he killed his wife, Angela, last March. An arrest affidavit shows that Craig bought arsenic and potassium cyanide before his wife died, had it shipped to his office. Police say he may have laced his wife's protein shakes with poison. Craig's lawyer argued for the trial to be delayed because they said it would be hard to find a replacement toxicologist in time to testify. At hearing today, the judge agreed to push that trial to August. Car thefts may have peaked in Colorado. Nine News reporter Janelle Finch is live outside the Wheat Ridge Police Department. And Janelle, they're seeing fewer reports of stolen cars there. 
That's right, Alex. Fewer stolen cars here in Wheat Ridge, and the police department is hoping that that will help them when curbing other crime trends, too. Certain crime trends are going down. That has the Wheat Ridge Police Department looking up. Wheat Ridge is back to where it was in 2018 and 2019 for a lot of these different type of crimes. Alex Rose with WRPD says they had fewer cars reported stolen in the last year compared to years prior. The department saw auto thefts drop by nearly 27 percent between 2022 and 2023. Motor vehicle theft, we dealt with 310 in 2023. You know, that's closer to what we saw in 2018. That trend holds across the Denver metro area. The Colorado Metropolitan Auto Theft Task Force says auto thefts are down 30% year to date compared to 2023. Generally speaking, Colorado, the Denver metro area, we know Denver saw a lot of issues in 2022 with motor vehicle theft. And now everybody is kind of trying to swing the pendulum and crack down hard on that. In the first three months of 2022, CMAT reported nearly 100 cars were stolen every day in the Denver metro area. Rose says getting ahead of stolen vehicles can help the department get in front of other criminal activity. A lot of the times when we are dealing with a single crime, whether it be a, a theft or a burglary or a robbery, chances are we're dealing with a stolen vehicle. Now, Rose says they're focused on reallocating resources to where crime trends are going up. And that's been a focus for us this year is preventative persistent police work. Now, not all crimes are on a decline here in Wheat Ridge. Police say that drug related incidents, burglaries and thefts are on a rise within the last year. Alex. All right, Chanel reporting live. Thank you. Colorado State Patrol and Denver Police say fake temporary license plates are a big problem right now. They say most are bought online through different websites or ads. The replica plates may look real, but legal Colorado tent plates have a hologram with the state of Colorado seal on there, like right on the top. And there's some other security features that are really hard to replicate. Officials say it appears people are buying them online knowing they're fake. Some even attempt to make a paper license plate themselves just using a printer. Last year alone, there were more than 1,000 citations handed out. 73 along I-70, 223 along I-25, and 243 in the greater Denver area. This is all on top of what officials see on interstates. Keep in mind, there's only two ways that you can obtain a real license plate. you got to get it directly from a dealership or the DMV. If you get caught with a fake license plate, you will be cited, face a Class 2 misdemeanor, go to court, and you'll even face possible jail time. State health care leaders are warning that Denver Health is nearing what they called a financial death spiral. Colorado Safety Net Hospital does not love that term, but they also don't dispute it. That stark language came up at the Capitol as legislators fast-tracked $5 million to keep Denver Health afloat. The Joint Budget Committee agreed to spend the money against the recommendation of their own staff, who said one-time funding can't fix what's broken with Denver Health. Among its well-known issues, uncompensated care provided for people without insurance. Last year, the vast majority of that care went to patients that the hospital believes are citizens but uninsured. But there were also rising uncompensated costs for caring for migrants, too. The state's researchers say that without major structural change, Denver Health is headed for financial failure. A spokesperson said that Denver Health plans to use the funding to backfill some out-of-county uncompensated care costs. And they acknowledged that whole death spiral situation, saying that without long-term solutions, their trajectory is non-sustainable.